music education is increasingly viewed as a luxury. And honestly, you wouldn't starve without music, or would you? Studies show that cows that listen to 12 hours of classical music per day produce more milk, and vineyards where music is played through loudspeakers all day through are healthier, require less use of pesticides, and the plants that grow closer to the loudspeakers produce up to 50% more. And the list could go on and on. Of course, these are just some of music's side effects. My point is that music affects everything in its environment. Its purpose may sometimes be to please our ears or to get us on our feet dancing. Once released, though, its power affects all surroundings. It is a form of energy, a vibration, that may have an impact on everything it reaches. Since ancient times, people realized that music is the most powerful of all human cultural activities. And that could explain the fact that for centuries, musicianship was reserved for privileged minorities. You had to be born into a family of musicians, be a nobleman or a priest, to gain access to music education. Luckily, that has all changed in the past 200 years. Music education became increasingly available to all those who showed talent and the will to learn. In fact, people today have the opportunity of receiving formal education in a vast array of subjects and arts. But not everything is considered equally important. I doubt you would be denied an office job because you can't play the piano or because you can't dance. But what if you have a difficulty in writing or in reading? That would probably cost you the job. Most people consider language and mathematics more important than the arts. And that might explain why they are the top priority in every school system. Attending school and receiving an education should provide you with the necessary skills to achieve success in society. If you can't get a job, you will probably be considered unsuccessful. So mostly everywhere, attending school and receiving an education is extremely important if you want to succeed. Economic growth, political change, and in general, all the change that is happening is leading people to move from one place to the other. They're seeking for better opportunities. This is particularly true for Greece today. Many people settle abroad and raise their children in a different culture. These children, having to communicate through two languages, would most probably become bilingual. But what happens to their musical understanding? That is part of what I will try to explain to you today. This is my first piano teacher, Mr. Klein, in the 1970s in Columbus, Ohio. He's a jazz pianist and was invited by my parents to teach me how to play the piano. Being an excellent teacher, he realized that if he wanted me to practice, he had to teach me music I found exciting. So, when he asked me what I want to play, I ran to the record player and played him some of my favorite Greek music. I have no idea what went through his mind. I remember, though, that he listened to the music repeatedly, took his pencil, and wrote down the notes so that we could work on it. He never made any remarks on the quality of the music. In fact, I don't know if he even liked it. Mr. Klein was my teacher for the three years of my piano life, the first three years, until I was about seven. He taught me how to play, read, and write music. But most importantly, he showed me that playing the piano is one of the most wonderful things there are in life. His transcription of Greek music may not have been 100% accurate, but I was so excited to be able to play that music that I couldn't wait for my weekly lesson. He succeeded in planting the seed of joy in music making in me, which was the greatest gift he could have offered me. He was connecting my love and excitement for Greek music to his knowledge in Western music. That allowed me to become bimusical as well as bilingual. Recent studies have focused on bimusicality, a term that could be loosely explained as musical ability on dissimilar musical styles. Imagine, for example, the musical environment of a Chinese person born and raised in a Chinese home in Germany, for example. 
This person would most probably be described as bimusical as well as bilingual. Now, in the case of Greece, things are a little different. Greece lies between Europe and Asia. Eastern and Western traditions have always coexisted here. This is also obvious in the tuning system used by Byzantine music, traditional Greek music, as well as by music based on Western classical tradition, such as the music of Mozart or Beethoven. Let's listen to some examples of these distinct styles. First, the Byzantine music example. <laughs> You just listen to a priest chanting answered by the chorus. The reason the example sounds oriental is because the tuning system it's based on uses different pitches than the typical Western scale. To make the distinction more understandable, I will now play an example of a violinist playing a Greek traditional song. The timbre of the violin is familiar to most of you, but the melodic line reveals the music's origin. Now, listen to a typical Western European melody. This was the opening from Beethoven's third cello sonata. The differences between the three examples are quite striking. But for those of you who are familiar to Greek music, they represent different perspectives, not a familiar and a foreign one. Scientific evidence suggests that musical training influences the way we listen. In fact, musical training might place us in a better position to understand and encode speech. A simple explanation for that is that music understanding often demands precise processing of information we receive through our ears. Even if music is not processed in exactly the same brain regions as language, the neural pathways used in both cases have been shown to overlap, at least partially. That might be the reason why musical training in young children has been found to enhance speech. Given the above, it would be logical to expect that children exposed to two or more musical systems would have even higher demands placed on their neural networks, hence making them even more precise. Bimusicality could therefore be considered an advantage in oral perception. The brain is a part of the human body where all sensory input is collected, processed, and evaluated. Our actions, our decisions, our thoughts, all our emotions all depend on how our brain works. So, what happens to our brain when we are being educated? A simplistic analogy could be that of building infrastructure. Say you want to cross a river from point A to point B, and there is no bridge connecting these two points. You have the option of traveling to point C, where there is a bridge, crossing the river, and then going on to point B. This would get you there, but you would probably need more time. Instead, if you could get on a boat, that would get you there quicker. Even better, if you could build a bridge, you could go back and forth as often as you would like to. When we are young, our brains are strong and malleable. They build bridges that can take us anywhere we choose to go. The older we get, the more difficult it is to build bridges. So we start looking for the boat to get across. Even later, our options are reduced to existing bridges. So we have to take the faraway bridge if we want to cross the river. If our life experience and our education have made us build bridges, lots of bridges, when we were young and strong, we can keep using them later on in life when our strength starts to diminish. We also have lots of possibilities when we are considering which direction to take while trying to reach our goal. Even if something goes wrong along the way, chances are we'll make it. 
Now think of someone with a moderate life experience and poor education. This person will have fewer bridges, and in case some of them become inaccessible, he or she will risk being isolated on the one side of the river. Better education means more and better input for the brain. It may also mean using better tools to evaluate the vast flow of information, helping the individual focus on the important bits. If you imagine a society of well-educated people, you may picture polite people, effective in their goals, and balanced on a personal, emotional level. These people would be able to find solutions to their problems, choosing one of the infinite possibilities their well-educated brain is able to perceive. On a practical level, that means that they have to be able to see towards every direction and understand what they're looking at, something we now know depends on their neural circuitry. A great variety of stimuli during childhood from many different areas of human activity and knowledge will provide the right environment in which a developing child can become a well-educated adult. Can music education be missing from here? Of course not. Children today are confronted with situations that were not predictable even 20 years ago. How can we plan a good education if we don't know what the world and the society will be like when these children are going to look for jobs? We can't. The only thing we can do is provide them with a better means of understanding the world and to protect them so that they can find the best solutions for themselves. Music can open the door to a safe place away from trouble, where children can release their energy even at times when it seems impossible elsewhere. Children use music just like adults do. It is much more than just another activity in their lives. It is an inseparable part of their development as members of their social groups, such as their family or their neighborhood. Music can teach children how to live according to the basic values of their culture. Having a bi-musical environment, children can feel part of two cultures or two traditions. Now, think of today's societies. People move to other countries to find better jobs and to live a better life. Minorities exist in most societies, while problems arise by the fact that different isn't always considered good. Music is an excellent medium to build a bridge, helping people realize that there is more to share than to divide. Emotions can be shared without the barrier of words. If you're brought up by musical, you can equally enjoy and feel part of both cultures. This is a real and objective advantage for a growing child. When we deprive children from access to quality music education, we're denying them the right to experience all the meanings that are found only in music. My commitment and my passion for music education stems from the belief that significant social changes don't threaten us, but instead, they challenge us. Through their remarkable diversity, these changes can enhance, beautify, and expand our life experience. My thoughts and actions reflect the deep-rooted conviction that music can change the world. However, I am not here to stand for music education. I am here to stand up for the role music education can play in supporting the transformation of today's problems into tomorrow's solutions. Thank you.